In Boston in 1831, claiming that which is not just is not law, William Lloyd Garrison began publishing a militant anti-slavery newspaper, The Liberator. He called for complete and immediate abolition. I am in earnest. I will not equivocate. I will not excuse. I will not retreat a single inch. And I will be heard. He was heard, and his message was clear. Slavery was sin, and those who maintained it, criminals. The abolition movement grew, inspired by passionate leaders. Harriet Tubman called Moses by the slaves who followed her north to freedom. Wendell Phillips named the golden trumpet of abolitionism for his oratory. And Frederick Douglass, the son of a slave and a white man. I appear this evening as a thief and robber. I stole this head, these limbs, this body from my master and ran off with them. Douglass was so eloquent that skeptics charged he could never have been a slave. In part to prove them wrong, he wrote an autobiography, purchased his freedom with $600 obtained from English admirers, and returned to the struggle. The abolitionists would raise the Negroes to a social and political equality with the whites, and that being affected, we would soon see the present condition of the two races reversed. They and their northern allies would be the masters, and we the slaves. John C. Calhoun. More and more Southerners worried about the growing political as well as economic power of the North. Northerners were increasingly hostile to slavery. Still, most Southerners refused to acknowledge even the possibility of changing their way of life. On the north bank of the Ohio, everything is activity, industry, labor is honored, there are no slaves pass to the south bank and the scene changes so suddenly that you think yourself on the other side of the world. The enterprising spirit is gone. Alexis de Tocqueville. We are separated because of incompatibility of temper. We are divorced north from south because we hated each other so. Mary Chestnut. On the clear moonlit night of November 7, 1837, a mob surrounded a warehouse at Alton, Illinois, intent on destroying an anti-slavery newspaper run by the Reverend Elijah P. Lovejoy. When one of the mob moved to set the building on fire, Lovejoy, armed with a pistol, came out to stop him. The slavery men shot him dead and dumped his printing press into the Mississippi. The news stunned the nation. A white man had been killed over black slavery. Protest meetings were held throughout the North. One abolitionist wrote that thousands of our citizens who lately believed that they had nothing to do with slavery now begin to discover their error. In Hudson, Ohio, a clergyman told a church gathering, the question now before us is no longer can slaves be made free, but are we free, or are we slaves under mob law? In the back of the church, a strange, gaunt man rose to his feet and raised his right hand. Here before God, in the presence of these witnesses, I consecrate my life to the destruction of slavery. John Brown 